so welcome back to the podcast. Today's topic is something that I feel that every entrepreneur, every person just in general needs to talk about and know. And that's the idea of like, what are we supposed to do with our money? <laughs> so many people come to me because I'm a business owner and they're telling me how they want to monetize their passion. But the question that I always end up asking them is, what is the goal? What's the end goal for this money that you're about to make? And that's when usually they're drawing a blank. So for today, I have my good friend coming in to have an amazing conversation about how we should think about our money. And then of course, what do we do with the money that we are working so hard to get? And so our guest for today is Tremaine Wills, and she is a financial planner and investment advisor. Let's welcome her to the podcast. Hello, hello. Hey, I'm so excited that you are here because we've had opportunities in several different settings to kind of talk about some of the things that you support just people in general with. And I love the idea that we can build financial wealth, right? It doesn't have to be something we're born into. It doesn't have to be something that we luck into. There actually can be like a plan, a strategy, things to implement to get to that goal of like having financial freedom. freedom. But before we get there, I want you to tell us a little bit of your story. Like, how did you get into business and how did you make yourself financially free? Listen, listen. Uh, well, first, thank you so much for having me. Um, uh, I'm so appreciative of the opportunity to be on your platform. I don't take that lightly. Um, and so a little bit about me. Um, I started this journey um, when I was 12 or 13, right? Uh, my first taste of entrepreneurship, I was a hair braider. Um, and I was just like doing hair around town, um, the local hair braider. And I got really popular for my skill set. Um, so much so that my mom started making business cards for me. And my business was called Tame Your Main Braids by Tremaine. And it was then I learned how to exchange a skill set that I have for income. So I was like, okay, I know how to do this thing. I can help somebody either save time or do something that they can't do um, in exchange for money. And so I, I learned this super quick, right? Um, and I got really, really good at it. Um, and my business pretty much operated on word of mouth referrals. I didn't like, this was before Instagram and all that stuff, right? And so um, pretty quickly, I understood what it was like to start to accumulate money. But as soon as I was making it, I was spending it. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, I didn't have any examples of what it looked like to um, make your money work harder for you. And so at the time, I only knew what it was like to make it, spend it, and then have to go make some more money, right? And so... Um, that was like my first taste of entrepreneurship. But as you can imagine, doing all this hair, like standing up, my back was hurting. I'm like 17 thinking like, oh, this, this isn't it. <laughs> I cannot keep doing hair and having my back hurt, my knuckles cracking, like this ain't the answer. And so I became super interested in like the fundamentals of business. And so I pursued a degree in business. While I was at school, I realized that there are additional ways to make money that don't require you to exchange, exchange time for money. And I learned about investing. And so that's when I stepped into my career. Um, I was a financial specialist for a retail bank, one of the uh, larger banks in the US. And I became investment licensed, insurance licensed, and uh, was helping clients put together um, what needed to happen with their finances. And so I learned all of this through my employment and I was realizing like, wow, there is a section of the world that is learning about money that my community is has no information about it, right? So I only stayed at that employee for a couple of years and what I did is I took what I learned and I came back and I started my own company called Mind Over Money, teaching us what we needed to do so that we could build wealth, so that we could stop slaving and exchanging time for money. Um, and what that really looks like to have a financial plan in place where you don't have to worry about, you know, the next paycheck or the next payday. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of been the journey. And for like the past few years now, I've been doing this full time as a full time entrepreneur, um, really getting to craft 
uh, what my lifestyle looks like. And I think that is super exciting because it's not just me saying like, oh, hey, you can do this as a business owner. It's like, I live this, right? So like, it's, it's super awesome. I love it. And I love that you talked about, because I resonated with the idea of like not having the examples of people doing the thing that I want to become. I think oftentimes they talk about how like kids, especially kids from impoverished neighborhoods, how they think they have to be like a drug dealer or a ball player to get out and make money. It's not until you see real examples of other ways that you really truly believe you can do it. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I went to because I'm, I'm a black woman, I'm just going to call it how, I, how it is. And I remember the first time I went to a wealthy black person's house. And for the first time, I really remember it clicking inside of me like, you could have this. Because I had been in wealthy, you know, white people's houses. I had. And I was like, oh, that's nice. It's cool. I see how they live in. But it did not connect with me the same as seeing people who look like me, who I could identify with, living a life that I knew deep down, almost on a subconscious level that I wanted to aspire to get to. So I love how you talked about that. And I love that to people in our generation are actually doing those things. So the people that are going to come after us can be like, oh yeah, I shoot, she got this amount of money and she living like this and she going on trips. It's like, yes, we all can do that. So thank you for even putting that in our mind. So I do want to talk because when I was when I was coming up, um, I, I guess I was like lower middle class, just to be honest. Um, and then when I became an adult, I was definitely low, low poverty, below the poverty, deep down in the buckets of poverty. <laughs> like I was struggling, y'all. Um, and so for people like that who are really like you could, again, you have the dreams, you you know, you want this better life for yourself, but maybe you don't have a lot of income coming in. Can we still build some type of financial freedom or some type of at least plan to get free financially? So this is a tough question, right? Um, one thing that's not communicated often enough is that we have to have the mental capacity to build wealth, right? Mm -hmm. It's more than just working a job and money coming into our account. Because if I, if I hold on to any type of financial trauma, that has negative impacts on my relationship with money, I will struggle to put that money to work and to have the, the money bill, right? So there's there's two things that are at play here, right? We have one, we're not generating enough income. So if I don't make enough money and I'm barely able to meet the needs of my day-to-day -day expenses, there's not much discretionary money left over to be able to invest. And so the first thing is one, well, you got to make more money. That's the bottom line. There is not enough creative budgeting in the world. You, you can cut out all of the things, right? But at the end of the day, that is only going to take you so far. You have to make more money. And so if you listen to this podcast, if you don't get nothing else, you got to make more money, period, right? Um, but then the other piece is addressing the relationship you have with money. So are there negative thoughts you have connected to people who are wealthy? And that's something that I had to overcome. Um, when I was younger, I would hear things like, well, they had to do something illegal to get that money or rich people are bad. They, they selfish. Right. And so you start to like those things deposit in your subconscious and you start to believe it. And so you'll start to self-sabotage anything that pushes you in that direction because you believe it's bad. Right. And so for me, I had to overcome those thoughts and realize that money actually has no characteristics. It is mm. nothing but an extension of who we are. So if you are someone who's a natural giver and you like helping other people and like that's your demeanor, having more money will only amplify that. And it wasn't until I was in a position where I was like, oh, I can do these things now because I am coming from a place of abundance that it's, it's easy to pour from the overflow versus assuming you had to screw somebody over and like take money out of somebody else's pocket to become wealthy. And that's not the case, right? There are lots of people who are very well off that are amazing people. But if we don't ever do the work inside to address, you know, well, what are the blocks that I have that are keeping me from building wealth? It doesn't matter how much money you make, because then you'll make it and it'll just go right back out because you subconsciously believe that it's wrong for you to have it. You don't want to be that person. So it, one, you got to make more money. And then two, you have to address any financial trauma you have that is causing you to resist 
asset accumulation. I, I'm sitting here thinking like I've been there, <laughs> been there where you're thinking, because I think in mainstream media, usually even it down to like cartoons, when people are like really rich, they're usually the villains, right? Because mm-hmm. they have all the money to make all this, this chaos. Mm-hmm. And then even in our communities, because there wasn't a lot of money, people who did have it were seen as like these just negative people that didn't care about others. And I know since most of you listening are entrepreneurs, you may sometimes feel a little bit of guilt about asking people to pay you your worth because of that feeling about, oh, money's icky or being that used car salesman, that type of feel of like, I'm, you know, should I be asking people for this? What if, you know, this is taking money from them and their family? It's like, well, you're providing a service, you're providing them support, you're giving them um, a chance to better themselves, right? Because I only deal with, you know, ethical folk. So I'm saying you're doing something positive, then you should be compensated for it. And then you should make your money, make money for you so that you can, you know, support the people you want to support. I have a coach that talks about how oftentimes we just have these hearts of wanting to help people. And then we try to help people now and ain't got no money to do it. So we're scraping, we're just scraping. And it's like, how can I help these people? But if we actually focus on monetizing things that we could truly make a a nice amount of money on, then we could just give the money out. We could, we could spend it. And so sometimes you're right. We have to change the way we think about money um, because it's hard. It is hard because it's generation upon generation. It's a lot of just subliminal things. It's not necessarily somebody telling us, hey, money is bad, but it's like all the things we see and hear that make us internalize that money is bad. But I like how you said it's, 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 it's a, you just using it. It's just a, it's paper. It's, it's a card. It it doesn't have a good or bad. It's how you choose to handle it. I love that. Yeah. That that resonates with me because I, I had to do some self work. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. (laughs) And, And honestly, all of us, we have to become a different version of ourselves in order to access other resources, right? So for, for a lot of us, like the person you are today is not who you were 5, 10, 15 years ago. And if you are that same person, it's probably because you're still experiencing the same trauma, right? So mm-hmm. like over time, we go through different iterations of who we are and it's required that we do self-work so that we can unlock those next best levels. So, and, and like, even as a professional in this space, there are still things that I am unlearning um, and finding out throughout the journey, right? And sometimes I get to learn through, you know, watching <laughs> clients go through stuff, but it's a continual progression. There's never this moment where you're just like, I got it all figured out, right? Um, and I think that's important to note too, especially to entrepreneurs because, and I, I went through an audit today with my company, um, and it, it was it was eye opening for me to think back to when I wanted to be in this position, right? When I wanted to have an investment advisory firm and I wanted to manage client assets, and I'm a different person than I was, you know, before I started this company. And a lot of that only came into fruition because my mindset shifted. I started to believe that I could be the person that was managing millions and you know, if you would have asked me 10 years ago what I'd be doing, I would have told you, no, <laughs> ain't no way. <laughs> Nobody want a little black girl managing their money, but I know that not to be true now. Lots of people want me managing their money. Yes, when, look, when, when somebody is great, I don't care what color your skin is, <laughs> help me, help me. But I do like, because again, I definitely identify as a black woman. I do like having people that understand my background um when it comes to working with me because there may be like you said some mindset shifts that you got to be like hey sis hold on yeah. you know we gotta we gotta talk through this and i love that connection and i think some people feel some type of way but i think think about therapy think about your doctors think about um even like religious people you look up to you want people in your life to support you that get where you're coming from get your way of thinking so that they can help heal you and bring you to the next level same thing goes with your, some of your business connections Um, But I do want to talk about debt for a second, though, Mm -hmm. because I get we got to change our mindset. But some of us have gotten ourselves in a little bit of a pickle already. (laughs) Just going to be real. Um, And we just we've accrued a lot of debt, you know, whether it be like school debt. I know for me, I have a lot of medical debt, things like that. How do we you know, we're, we're getting in new money. Like, do we tackle our old debt or do we kind of hope they forget about us and then bill? Like, that's what I'm hoping she gonna say, y'all. Like, Sally Mae is after me. If she hears this podcast, she's gonna be like, hey, Corey, I heard heard you was looking for me. But yeah, like, how do we handle, how do we handle debt as we're trying to build this financial, you know, 
thing that we're trying to build to have freedom through that? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's two different ways that I like to look at debt. There is debt you use to leverage to grow your business, debt that you're investing with. And then there's consumer debt that you need to get rid of, right? So I don't believe that all debt is bad. I think that you should use other people's money to invest in your business. So I'm going to separate it into two buckets. Now, for the personal consumer debt, you got to pay it off. You got to pay it off, right? Um, now, there are some things that you can take into consideration to see what programs are available, especially as it comes to medical debt. Sometimes there are funds where if you're unable to pay, um, you might be able to ask what relief programs the medical institution has in place to help assist you. Um, but at the end of the day, when we enter into agreements and we borrow or owe money, it's our responsibility to pay what is owed. And that's a core principle that if you intend to become wealthy, you need to pay attention to because we cannot build wealth ethically and not pay what we owe. Right. Because like if you're in business and you do service for a client and they don't pay you. You feel a way. Right. So we have to become the type of people we expect to serve. So if it is your nature to not pay your bills or to owe for services that you have already received, you're going to attract those same type of clients and that you can't expect anything better because that's not who you are. So the first thing is identify, you know, how much those debts are. If there are opportunities to have relief in any situations, sometimes when you owe creditors, you can call them and have a conversation and say, hey, I know I owe this amount. What are the options? And sometimes they will settle with you and you might not even have to pay the full amount. Right. And so there are different like stipulations around if it's going to stay on your credit report or not. But at the end of the day, even if things come off your credit report, you're still responsible for the debts. So the, the first piece is like addressing our character um, because we can't say we want to be wealthy and rob other people of what they are owed. Right. And that's going to be tricky. There's all kinds of philosophies here. But the way that I would like to engage with people is for them to have character about paying their debts. So you become the type of person that you want to do business with, right? Yeah, you, you called us, you called a few of us out. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody's sitting there like, mm, okay, I thought I liked her, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> listen, listen, I'm telling you when, you, when you move with integrity, life becomes easier. You are extended grace more than you think you deserve, right? Because there have been so many instances where, because I don't always get things right in my business, and, and that's just me being honest. But be, because I move with integrity, people know I'm not trying to intentionally do them a disservice. And so they're like, you know, I, I trust that your intention was good. We can fix this. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's just the way I would prefer to move so that there is no oh, she looking at you kind of sideways. Like, I don't know about that one. Right. Um, it, it and honestly, overall, it's just a it's a better experience because then you don't got to worry about well, who calling my phone, <laughs> right? Yeah, that that really like, I don't answer call. no phone. <laughs> I don't answer no phone now. Listen. Don't pick it up. But no, I, I like what you said too. I think a lot of this is just shifting how we want to do, how we want to show up. Mm -hmm. because I, I get you because yeah I want people to pay me for sure I'm definitely going I'm gonna call you I'm gonna I'm text you send you messages <laughs> yeah where is my money I want it today mm -hmm. I don't want it tomorrow I want it today just like you pay that rent I want to be paid so I definitely get that um me and Sally may have to have a chat I'll try I'm gonna try to do better y'all Sally may be different though <laughs> listen so and, and this is not me saying don't pay your student loans right but at the end of the day if there are situations where money is tight, because it, it gets tight, right? Call and have a conversation, right? So we That's, can't just hide. We can't hide. hide. Because when you hide, people assume you don't want to pay. And then mm -hmm. you, you get into more trouble trying to run away versus just calling and saying, you know what? Hey, I'm not that person, but this is what's going on right now. How can you work with me? Yeah, that makes sense. 
I, it definitely does. Just, you know, see, sometimes we just afraid to hear what they're going to say. And so I think it's right. You know, sometimes we got to put our big girl panties on, you know, pull them up and say, hey, we, let, let's handle business and, and let's at least see what we got to do. Because at least if we know, we can plot a course forward. If we don't know, we just sitting here scared in the corner hoping mm -hmm. nobody finds us. So it makes sense for yeah, sure. Yeah, and then you, you can alleviate the anxiety that comes from, well, I got to do these for these people, but I ain't talked to them versus like just knowing like, all right, this, these are what the terms are. This is how much money I have to come up with. This is when I have to come up with it by. And like, this is what happens if I don't do it. And now it's white and black. You ain't got to guess. As a business owner, the best thing you can do is have clarity around what you have to do. Because there are so many other variables that are moving in your business. You don't need to throw in the stress of trying to run away from a debt. They got your information. They're going to find you. <laughs> they do. They can find you when you move. It's like other people, they, they can't find you somehow when they're trying to give you something you want. But I'm telling you, them creditors, boy, I'm surprised they don't come to your door. They they know your change of address. They know when you change your phone number, your cousin's house. Just like your, your mom will get some information. It's like, how they call my mama? Like, have you seen Corey today? Have you talked to her? It's like, goodness gracious, they will find you. But that's cool. We're going we to handle business. We're going to be adults from now on. But I do, because you mentioned briefly um, earlier on in our conversation about credit for a second. And so I do want to touch on that because I think some of us feel like if our credit isn't good, or whatever good is considered that we can't invest, like we can't make our money make money. Is that true or is there like a loophole or how much credit should we have? Um, credit is independent of investing, right? So you can have a terrible credit score and still invest. Credit gives you the opportunity to borrow money from other people. So if you have bad credit, that just means you're going to have a hard time borrowing money. That does not stop you from making money. You only need discretionary income to invest. So if I have money, I can have a 300 credit score. But if I have $100,000 in the bank, I can put that money into an investment. Now, I can't borrow to invest, but that doesn't stop me from investing cash that I have. So there's two separate things. Now, the question is, should you be investing when you have incredibly high debt? And my answer is it depends, right? What are the interest rates on your debt? Um, what type of debt is it, right? So if I have a lot of credit card debt and it's not on a 0% APR period, then I probably should not be investing right now because that interest rate is somewhere between 20 and 30%. And the money that I'm going to make in that investment probably is not going to give me a better return than the interest I'm going to be paying on that debt. So I like to tell my clients that double digit debt, double digit interest needs to be paid off. But if you have interest rates that are like four and a half, five percent, like maybe you have a mortgage or maybe you have student loans that are federal that, you know, the interest rate isn't that high. It's probably OK to invest while you're paying down that debt because the return you're going to get on the investments will probably be more than the interest you'll pay on the debt. And so a lot of this comes down to math, right? Sometimes we like to move on emotion. I don't want to owe nobody nothing. So I'm going to wait to invest until I don't owe nobody nothing. That's a bad deal, right? Um, but you also want to look, well, what does the math say? If it's going to cost me more in interest to hold this debt, then I want to pay it off. But if I'm going to make more money investing on the returns I'll get, then how much I'll pay in interest, I'm going to invest. Right. So we want to look and see, well, what does what do the interest rates say? Um, and can I make a decision that way based on my expected return on the investment? Well, thank you. Look, she's clearing up some things for us. But the one thing I will say is if you hear she's saying you got some options, this is why you need to hire a financial planner and advisor, um, because it depends on so many things, how you should maneuver, what you should do first, what you should prioritize. So while she's giving us some general information um, today, well, it was more than general, but some, some, some things to think about, some things to ponder, I do encourage you guys to have someone in your circle that can help you make these financial choices based on your particular financial situation. And I always tell you guys, I'm gonna bring on tons of experts and some I'm gonna say, hey, you can do some things yourself. Um, you can learn from them, but you know, hey, you can handle this. But when it comes to your coaches, 
people dealing with your money and your legal, you may want to outsource that because I always say you want to make sure you stay out of the orange, right? You ain't trying to get locked up. Listen, <laughs> the alphabet boys, I don't play around with them folks. <laughs> yes, it's just like, no. So I definitely think if you're hearing some things today that really make you think, okay, I'm ready to move. I'm trying to, you know, make some changes. I'm trying to leave a true legacy. Cause some of you are saying it like I'm starting a business cause I want financial freedom. I want legacy, but yet you don't have anybody in your life to tell you how to utilize this money that you're bringing in and how to make your money, make money. Then you're really not staying true to the mission that you started the business for. But look, before we hop off, cause we haven't got through a lot of things. I do want to talk about investments really quick. I know it's a huge, huge category. <laughs> But I just want you to give us maybe three thoughts around investment for somebody who's never invested at all. Like, is there a place to maybe start? That's a that's a good way to close this out. Um, the first thing I want to say is that you have to invest to build wealth, right? That's not to say you have to buy stocks, right? Because there's lots of ways to invest, but you cannot save your way to becoming a millionaire, right? You can't save your way to financial independence. So you have to put your money in vehicles where it's going to multiply and work harder for you. And that's choosing sound investments that could look like investing in the stock market. It could look like investing in startups. It could look like investing in real estate. Right. There's so many ways that you can do it. But you have to become an investor of some sort in order to build wealth because your savings account is not going to cut it. Your savings account, even if it's in a high yield savings, it's doing what, three three and a half percent and the cost of living is eating all of that up. Right. So the, the key is one, you have to become an investor. Um, since we're talking to entrepreneurs, I want to encourage all entrepreneurs to have some sort of retirement plan and you can start with the basic IRAs, right? Depending on your income level and whether you're going to pay taxes now or later, that could be a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA, but, you need to have an account where you are starting to put money away so that you can stop running this business, right? Um, a lot of us, and this is myself included, when I started, my identity was wrapped up in the business and like everything was going back into it. And you have to get to a place where you separate you, the person, from the business that you run and possibly position the business so that it can be sold, right? And when that happens, of course, there'll be a payday from selling the business, but what about how the business pours back into the owner, right? There should be a place that you are setting money aside for your future, just like you would do if you were working a regular nine to five. And so it could be, your starting point could be your IRA, but there's also opportunities for business owners to open things like solo 401ks, or SEP IRAs or simple IRA, lots of different things that are specific to business owners, but you have to invest in some sort of retirement plan as you are growing this business. You owe that to yourself. And then lastly, do not get caught up on the hype, right? Um, there's lots of different things that are going to grace your timeline. And if you've been paying attention to the news, you saw that lots of different influencers were getting fined for pumping up different cryptocurrencies. And that is actually very common. We're seeing a lot of the news happen to report on it now because it's a lot of celebrities that have done it. But that happens all the time on social media. And um, we think it's the next big thing to buy because everybody's talking about it. And so when you start to see everybody talking about investing in something that's probably not the time to do it um because it's going to reach a place where it's hitting its peak and it's about to turn back and go down so um, my three keys you have to become some sort of investor um you need to set money aside in a retirement account and you want to not follow the hype right so if social media is telling you that you need to buy Tesla <laughs> and you've been seeing that on your timeline for five days don't buy Tesla because it's probably at a point in its cycle where it's about to turn around and go back down so th those are my three keys 
Well, thank you. I think that, again, it gives us something to think about, things to look out for, because I know Bitcoin, boy, they was they were pushing, they were in our DMs, like, hey, have you heard? Can we talk to you about it? They were they were going harder than Jehovah's Witness at your door. I'm telling you, <laughs> it was serious. I, look, and I don't even mind talking to people, but I was like, everybody doing Bitcoin? Why am I not doing Bitcoin? Like, I'm missing out. Um, so I love that you kind of talked about, like, not jumping into the hype. And again, that's why you need a financial advisor Think about all the wealthy people that you look at or that you know, and if they do certain things, so if they have a financial advisor, if they have a lawyer, if they have a copyright attorney, whatever the case may be, and you're trying to get there, you might want to start thinking like, maybe I need those people <laughs> in my life because they're getting told by experts when to invest, when to hop out, when to do different things. And we need that too. And so I love that you were here for, for us, the little guys trying to make our way up and, and again, have this life that we deserve, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm not doing all this every day to say that I'm an entrepreneur. I'm doing this because I want to leave something behind for my kid and his kid and his kid's kid. Like, I want to do that. I, I don't want to have to have my family's, you know, members struggle to buy their first house and to go into debt or for Sally Mae to be knocking at their door. Like, I don't want that, that life for them. And so that's something that we need to take responsibility for and say, how can we do the right thing now to make it easier for the future generations? So thank you for all the, the amazing tips and strategies and just things to think about now that we weren't necessarily thinking about before. Um, but before we hop off, please let us know how we can connect with you um if we are looking for some financial assistance as far as planning and um getting advice for investments yeah yeah well thanks um so you can find me everywhere on social media at tremaine wills that's my handle um i'm very very responsive um if you are looking for financial planning you can visit my website www.mindovermoney.net or you can get connected with our community um our community is called the four comma collective it is a group of entrepreneurs who are ambitious that want to build wealth and are looking for like-minded people to do it with and to learn with so if you're somebody who you know you need help budgeting you need help with an investment getting started you're trying to figure out how to pay off debt like all the things that we talked about this is a perfect place for you um because it's a safe space to ask questions right sometimes we feel like we should know all of the things and when we don't know we don't ask and so then we don't learn and so I spent a couple of years as a teacher. And so one of my passions is making sure that we understand the why behind the investments that we have and how it's going to tie into our financial future. So at the Four Comma Collective, um, you can get a free 14 day trial to join the membership to try us out. If you like it, stay. If you don't, at least you got some free information. Um, but just getting connected with other people who are trying to do similar things. I believe in accountability. I believe in seeing people who are doing the things that we want to do. So then you could just copy what works instead of having to figure out what you have to do all on your own, right? Entrepreneurship is already challenging. And the more spaces that we can get in where we can see and just mimic what works, the easier we make our lives. And so that's what the Four Comma Collective is all about. It's about creating and building a space where it's easy to just copy what works. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast again. Every time I talk to you, I know I'm going to learn something new. And guys, if you were listening today or you were watching and you learned something new and you really enjoyed this conversation, I encourage you to listen to our past episodes. And remember that we drop a new episode each and every week on Mondays. Uh, with that being said, guys, remember I rock, you rock, we all rock, and we will talk to you soon.